Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, incredible game from round 9 of the FidHS.com Grand Swiss. It's Nils Grandelius versus Fabiano Caruana and there were a lot of games to choose from uh, from round 9 but I decided to show this one as it's a great prelude to what uh, comes uh, in round 10. But we're going to discuss this after we check out the game. There's quite a lot to cover. It's a very very interesting end game uh, so let's uh, enjoy it. And sorry if I say some nonsense from time to time. Uh, we have a new baby in the house and I'm really not getting all that much sleep. So sometimes maybe I, you know, uh, go places. Uh, that being said, uh, let's check out the game. So uh, Grandelius with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have c5 going for the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Niels goes for the uh, Nils Medino Rosolimo attack. Uh, we have e6, castles, and knight uh, g to e7, preparing knight to g6. So rook to e1 and knight to g6. So this has all been played before, nothing out of the ordinary here uh, Caruana is preparing bishop to e7 and d5 and white as usual wants to play c3 and d4. So uh, c3 we have a6 challenging the bishop here, bishop all the way back to f1 uh, to be used uh, uh, later on and bishop to e7. We have d4, white strikes in the center, we have captors, captors and now black strikes in the center with d5. Uh, and here the usual uh, idea is just e5 grabbing more space in the center uh, but Grandelius plays e captors on d5. Uh, so this is a very early trade, e captures on d5 and now knight to c3. Uh, the downside being uh, that black just has a very natural way of developing his bishop. There is no longer a pawn on e6, so you can play bishop to e6 and uh, you, you, you are very happy. Uh, so here we have castles by Fabi and bishop to e3. Uh, we have bishop to e6, uh, although bishop to g4 might seem more active after h3, the, the bishop really has no purpose here. You can't go to h5 because of g4 and you really don't want to trade your bishop for a knight here. So you just have to go back. So of course, instead we just put it to e6 right away. Uh, and now uh, there is a game where uh, a move uh, a3 was played, but here we have knight to a4 uh, and it is now only as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see uh, what Fabi does. Fabi plays a bishop to b4. Here white wants to play some like rook to c1. He wants to play a3, b4, put the knight not there, put the knight on c5 and enjoy his position. So uh, Fabi uh, tries bishop to b4 first, attacks the rook and now if you go back then knight to a4 didn't really make much sense. So here we have bishop back to d2 uh, and the queen to d6. Developing the bishop, the, uh, defending the bishop, developing the queen and connecting your rook. So here we have bishop captures on b4, queen captures on b4, and now h3. And now what do you play here? Uh, it seems like you could play b5, kick away the knight and win the b2 pawn, but th this doesn't really work. After b5, uh, white is more than happy with knight to c5 because now you're attacking the bishop twice. And of course, uh, if queen captures on b2, we can start harassing the queen. Let's say queen a3, rook to e3, queen to a5, uh, and now we capture on e6, we pick up the pawn, and we've equalized in material, and we of course uh, have a better position now. So instead we have rook a to e8, uh, not bringing this rook uh, into the game, but rather this one because we plan to move the bishop. Uh, and uh, of course the knight is coming to c5, we'll attack the bishop and we want to play bishop to c8, but we don't want to play bishop to c8 while our rook is still on a8. We want to have our rooks connected. So that's why Fabi brings this rook to e8 uh, and now knight to c5. Attacks the bishop, uh, puts pressure on the b7 pawn and just bishop back to c8. So now offering a trade of rooks, uh, which uh, Grandelius goes for. We have rook captures on e8, rook captures and queen to b3. Now offering a trade of queens. Uh, so what do you play here? Uh, Fabi decides it's time to trade. We have a queen captures, knight captures, and now f6. As uh, Fabi no longer has a dark square bishop, uh, he has a light square bishop, so it makes sense to put your pawns in dark squares. Later on, you can play king f7, you can push those pawns, and also you are really restricting the movements uh, of this knight on f3. There are no more squares left for this knight. It's going to have to do something else. So rook to c1. Now if this knight moves, maybe we can uh, bring a rook over to c7. So knight g to e7. Uh, and now comes a3. We have king to f7 and now bishop to d3, putting pressure on the h7 pawn, so just h6. Now Fabi is preparing g5 uh, and white starts bringing the king into the game. King to f1, we have g5 and now, uh, like we said, this knight really has nothing to do here, so just knight back to g1. Now you can shift it to e2 to c3 and then maybe to uh, a4 and then bring this knight to c5. For the moment, this knight can't really move uh, as you would lose the d4 pawn. So here 
here, h5, Fabi just grabs more space on the king side, knight to e2, and now h4. So just grabbing more space, putting our pawns on dark squares. Uh, we have knight to c3, and now even f5. Uh, so that's really, really grabbing more space. And now uh, white abandons the plan of shifting the knight over to the queen side and now goes back knight to e2. Now this knight will be defending the d4 pawn and this knight can maybe go to d2, maybe to f3, maybe put some pressure on g5, uh, control e5 and so on. So king to f6 by Fabi and now knight to d2. Uh, and now knight to d8. Now the knight is coming to e6 where it will be nicely controlling the c5 square but also uh, many other squares here and you don't really care about rook to c7 or if white plays this we just kick it away and the, the rook really has uh, no no uh, place being there. So after knight to d8 we have rook to c3 uh, and now comes bishop to d7. Uh, we have knight to b3 again uh, with ideas of maybe knight to c5. Now comes knight to e6 guarding the c5 square and white very happily goes for this trade. Knight to c5, we have knight captures on c5, and now you could capture with the rook, you could capture with the pawn, uh, but capturing with the pawn, it, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to push those pawns and create some sort of a pass pawn with this bishop controlling all of these light squares. So instead, Grandelius goes for rook captures on c5, and now king to e6, putting uh, a king to, to e6 to defend the, the d5 pawn, so if knight to c3, you don't have to worry, uh, and now just rook back to c3. It's interesting, you could go for something like um, uh, knight to g1 to c3 here, but the problem is if knight g1, we can play knight c6, and now if knight to c3, king to d6, and now you can't pick up the pawn here because we pick up the d4 pawn, and then even the rook would be hanging. So white abandons this idea of remaneuvering the knight for the moment and brings the rook back, rook to c3, now you could play some like rook to b3, you could play b4, uh, and here king to d6, and now rook to b3. So attacking this pawn here, and uh, Karana advances it to b5. And now the only way for white to, uh, well, play this uh, with absolute precision is to play a4 here. Uh, it's a temporary pawn sacrifice, but it's not one that, uh, you know, uh, is is uh, uh, is good for black uh, for, because if b captures on a4 you can play rook to b6 check and now after the king moves you're gonna pick up the a6 pawn and now after rook to b8 going after the b2 pawn yes the a4 pawn is defended but you don't care you're gonna play knight to c3 and now if black captures here we can capture on a4 and it's not a problem uh, so this is what uh, white should go for however in the game we have rook to c3 and now knight to c6 by Fabi and now it's much much different uh, this knight really now controls a lot of squares. For example, this knight cannot move because the, the pawn falls. So here, white's idea is to play b4, and now uh, Caruana plays f4. So grabbing even more space on the king side. Uh, and what do you play here? Well, we have bishop to g6, attacking the rook, rook to a8, now preparing to push uh, the pawn to a5, and now king to e1. Uh, Niels uh, wants to improve the uh, activity of his king, but here there was the very interesting rook to c5. It prevents pawn to a5 because if pawn to a5 now, uh, we can play knight to c3. And now what do you do about this d5 pawn? Also b5 pawn is hanging, so here you, you're just going to have to trade. And after captures with check, king to a7, and now a captures on b4. Knight captures on b4, even rook captures on g5. And here it would be, uh, well, it's only white that can be better here. He's up a pawn, he has a very active position. Uh, so after rook to c5, you would actually have to play some like bishop to e6 to first defend your pawn, and then at some point, of course, you will be able to play a5. So maybe a slight improvement to white Niels played uh, the king to e1 uh, move uh, as Fabi now uh, immediately advances the pawn to a5. We have b captures on a5, knight captures on a5. He wants to bring the knight to c4 to really put pressure on that a3 pawn. Uh, and now knight to g1. Now the knight is coming to f3 and then going after the g5 pawn. So knight to c4, going after the a3 pawn, knight to f3, and now knight captures on a3. We have knight captures on g5, so the material is still equal, uh, and now knight to c4. Uh, and here uh, we have a very interesting move, and that is knight to f7 check, uh, the, checking the black king, asking what do you play now. But this is a one check that should never have been played, because here it would seem uh, that Fabi's position is completely winning, but it's uh, unclear why. So try and figure it out. Feel free to pause the video here and what do you play here with black while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations, as you really are a true master of the end game. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, King to E7 is what Fabi played, but this is not the winning idea. The winning idea is King to E6. And we're going to discuss this just a little bit, because after King to E7, uh, you don't have uh, sufficient control over the E5 square. After you play King to E6, uh, you don't really have Knight to E5. The thing is, if Knight to E5 now, we simply play Rook to A1 with check. And now after the King moves, we can play B4. We challenge the Rook here. After the Rook moves, now we play Knight captures on E5. And after D captures an E5, Bishop to B5 with check. And look at this Rook-Bishop combo. Uh, it's very, very uh, difficult to get out of this one. Uh, and it's uh, it's very hard to imagine such things from the moment where White delivered that check, where uh, a single King square would allow you to execute such a brilliant attack. For example, if King D2, Rook A2 check. And now after King to E1, we can even play Rook to E2 with check. And if King D2, now we play Rook captures an F2. And now we're going to gobble up all of these pawns here. If rook captures here, we're going to play bishop to c4. Everything is nicely defended. We're capturing this. We're capturing this. Uh, we are completely winning here. So after king to e6, you don't really have this knight to e5 idea. But you don't have uh, many other moves uh, either. Because, well, king is coming to f6. So you could play something like rook to f3. Attack this pawn. But still, king f6. If you capture here, we capture the bishop. And if bishop to h5, now we have this rook to e8 check, king to d1. And now rook to e4. Defending this pawn and attacking this pawn and there's nothing for white to do here if some like king c2 even bishop to e8 is just winning material and it's game over on the spot so incredible how after knight to f7 check uh the, the game is basically over if you play king e6 but fabi missed this he played king to e7 uh, and now the e5 square is available for the knight so of course grandelius goes for this we have knight to e5 and now uh, capturing doesn't really do uh, all that much for you if you capture we're going to play d captures and king to e6 now runs into the unpleasant rook to c7 so it's a very uh you know uh, difficult position to play. If rook to d8 defending the bishop preparing to capture on e5 uh, we're gonna play uh, rook to b7. Uh, so what do you play here? King captures on e5 now bishop to d3 and now we go after the pawn here there's no real way for black to defend it. If bishop c6 we just move the rook and capture on b5 next. Uh, it is again gonna be equal material with black controlling a bit more space but it shouldn't be enough to win the game. So instead after this uh, knight to e5 we have b4 uh, of course, you have to play this at some point in the game. Uh, uh, the rook has to move now. Rook to b3 and now rook to a1 with check. So the only way for Fabi to really uh, gain some sort of an initiative uh, comes with the sacrifice of the b4 pawn. But many great things in chess usually come with the sacrifice of the b4 pawn. So here we have king to e2, rook to a2 with check, king to e1, repeating the position a little bit, rook to a1, check, king e2, and now bishop to a4. Now the bishop to b5. It's Seems like a very dangerous uh, move, but uh, the bishop can simply block with bishop to d3. So bishop to a4, now forcing the rook to capture on b4, and then we get this bishop to d1 check in. So here, rook captures on b4, bishop to d1 check, and now king to e1. Uh, if you go if you go up the board, it's game over. Just rook a3 check, and you have no moves. You have to play rook b3, and this is just checkmate. All of the squares here are covered, as you can see. So after bishop to d1, king to e1 was played, and now we have bishop to c2 with check, uh, opening up a discovery to this bishop. But it's not really all that impressive. The bishop is defended. So here we have king to e2, and uh, now it doesn't really matter if if you capture, uh, for example, on e5, we're gonna capture on c2. So it doesn't really work. If you capture on, on g6, we're going to just recapture here. So Fabio repeats, bishop d1 check, king to e1, and now knight captures on e5. Uh, and now it's a problem. If you capture the knight, then bishop to c2 check is winning. We're, we're going to pick up this bishop. So king d2, bishop captures. Yes, you will have rook captures on f4, and you will have two pawns for, for the uh, for the bishop, but it's still with perfect play should be, should be a win for black. Uh, if, uh, you know especially with, with someone like Fabi playing. So instead, after knight captures on e5, rook to b1 was played, an excellent resource by Niels, uh, just uh, blocking the, uh, the the rook's attack to, towards the king. Now there are no discoveries with the bishop. Uh, and what do you play here? Uh, it's a really, really tricky position. There's only one move that wins you the game. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this incredible idea for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. Thank you. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing uh, anything weird like D captures on E5. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the move, of course, is F3. That's the good stuff. Um, and uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to discuss this. Uh, if you play something like... Um, uh, sorry, uh, not, not D captures on uh, E5. If you play something like Rook captures uh, on A1 uh, after F3... Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, th this is what I mean. Sometimes I just, uh, you know lose uh, uh, the the idea of, of what I'm doing. So the idea here, of course, is f3. And now the point is you cannot capture the rook uh, because f captures on g2 and uh, there's simply no, no stopping this pawn. We're just going to promote this pawn to a queen. Uh, so you're going to have to figure out something else. After f3, the only way to continue the game is g captures on f3. And now, uh, or okay, you could play king to f1. That's also possible, but uh, it's uh, much too easy for black. We're just going to capture here and after the king captures we're gonna play bishop to f3 with check and after the king moves we're gonna play captures with check bishop captures and now play knight to c6 and we're just gonna pick up this pawn we're gonna be completely winning this we're up a piece uh white has no pawns um, you know as compensation so instead after f3 g captures on f3 the only way for Niels to continue playing this game and now knight captures on g6 uh, rook captures on a1 and the bishop captures on f3 and now Fabi has two pieces for a rook uh, and uh, well very very good chances of winning this game so king d2 we have bishop to e4 king to e3 and now bishop to f5 going after the h3 pawn so we have to defend this rook to h1 and now king to f6 we have rook to h2 and now uh, knight to h8 uh, this knight to h8 I don't think really has a purpose I think it's sort of a waiting move as a um, uh, this is move 60 and you you get additional time uh, when you when you hit uh, 60 moves so i believe this is just uh, you know a reaching time control as the they were both very much low on the clock so here we have f3 fabi brings the knight back knight to g6 rook to h1 and now bishop to e6 so you have to figure out some sort of way of actually winning uh, the h3 pawn so rook h2 now comes knight to e7 king to f4 and now knight to f5 attacking the d4 pawn so rook to d2 defending the pawn as now the bishop can't capture the knight is on f5 and now bishop to d7 asking white what do you play here and now you have to play uh play a move and it, it has to be a move that uh, allows this rook to kind of go back to the h file to defend the, the, the pawn if the knight moves so rook to d1 was played but now knight to g3 and now there's really nothing you can do to defend the pawn we're going to capture with the bishop uh, and the knight covers the h1 square but grandel is still very resourceful he plays rook to d2 uh, now just prepares rook to h2 now if the pawn is captured you can play rook to h2 2 and now after the bishop moves uh, you can simply pick up the pawn and it's very unlikely that black will be able to win this so fabi has to thread very carefully here knight to h5 check king to e3 and now king to g5 and it was in this position on move 68 uh, that uh, Niels Grandelius resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, so the thing is, uh, if you play something like rook g2 check, we simply block with the knight, then we pick up the uh, pawn here on h3. If you defend the knight f1 check, just picks up the rook. So of course that's not possible. So you can't really start with rook to g2 check. You could start with rook to h2. Now the pawn is defended, but now we simply play knight to f4, attack the pawn once again. And after you make a move, because you have to make one move, we can simply capture it. Bishop captures on h3, and that's it. Let's say king f2, we're going to play bishop back to e6, make room for our pass pawn. If king g1, we're going to play knight to d3, and, you know, whatever. Rook to a3 attacks the knight, knight b4, we can harass the knight a little bit. Knight to c2, go after this pawn. Rook to d3, defending now bishop to f5, attacking the, the rook here. After rook to d2, uh, we can even play h3. So it's perfectly fine. The king is coming to f4 to g3 and it's game over. Uh, so yeah, uh, after king to g5 on move 68, Grandel is resigned and a very, very impressive victory for Fabiano Corwana, who will now face um, uh, Alireza Firuja on, on board one uh, in round 10. And we're going to have the clash that we were waiting for this entire tournament as Fabi is the, the, the top seed of the tournament. And it uh, took uh, 10 rounds for him to be paired with Alireza as Alireza was uh, constantly leading the tournament and Fabi was uh, always uh, like a point uh, behind the half a point behind so it's only now that we get to this uh, clash uh, it's fabi with the white pieces alireza will be having black uh, and it should be 
should be quite uh, quite the game. Uh, if uh, Alireza can win against Fabi with Black, then he, no doubt he already wins the tournament, uh, probably a round before uh, the tournament actually ends. Uh, but even if uh, it's a draw or if Fabi wins, uh, because uh, Fabi has a guaranteed entrance to the FIDE candidates tournament, so it doesn't matter if Fabi wins the tournament. Uh, if Alireza gets like second, he still qualifies, of course, uh, for, for the tournament as, you know, uh, Fabi can't take away the spot from uh, from anyone else. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, once again, congratulations to everyone who spotted uh, both of the um, uh, pause the video moments or, or even just one. You know, they were incredibly difficult. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Chess Hasi and a very happy birthday uh, to Pair for Cell. And I would like to thank David Leal, Tom Derolo and Mohamed Ali for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of this uh, amazing event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.